Welcome to OpenMentor.net. We are going to see Java exceptions. Exceptions are also errors, but unpredictable. You may not exactly find when exactly they will occur, but they may occur at some point of time. It's like a lightning arrester for the buildings. You do not know when the lightning will strike. So you have the lightning arrester at the top of the building. So the time of rain is unpredictable, whether uh, lightning will happen is unpredictable, whether that lightning will attack your building is unpredictable. So for unknown errors at unpredictable times, you have to use exception handling. This is very important in the Java world or in any programming world. Look at this method. I have got a simple method with three variables. Now I am entering the method. I do i and j as 10 and 5, then k equal to i divided by j. I print the value of k, then I am exiting this particular class. Let me compile this. I compile this. Now I execute this. Perfect. It enters the Java 16 main class, then k is 10 divided by 5 equal to 2, it is exiting. Now, let me do a simple thing. For some reason, imagine this j becomes 0. That means the denominator is going to be 0. Unknowingly, we did that. I compile this. I execute this now. Look at this. It enters the main. It got an exception called java.language arithmetic exception divide by 0 at some line of Java. Then, it has not printed this message, it has not printed this message. That means it just aborted, it just stopped. We do not know what happened after that point of time. So the program literally stops. So you may not know when the value of j will become 0. So typically exceptions divide by 0. Same way array index out of range you are trying to define an array five elements, you try to access the seventh element, you will be into a problem. Same way, null pointer, so somewhere you are trying to access a null pointer. There are a lot of exceptions, thousands of exceptions are available in Java. You may have to handle them. So handling the exception is very simple. Let us try handling this, this particular exception. Now look at this construct. What I have done is, somewhere I predicted some problems over here in this area. So what I did is, I put them under the try block. Try, open brace, close brace. Within that, you put the code where you may expect some exceptions at some point of time. So the construct is try a block, then catch. Under the catch, you are saying exception and then a variable name called e. This is exception is the built-in class. You are giving uh, a name of the object of the class is e. Then you are saying, just printing, I am in an exception handler. I want to know the exact text of the exception. This is the built-in method, e dot get message. If you say e dot get message, it will exactly print what the exception that has happened. Then, first the try block is executed. If there is any problem, the catch block is executed. Whether there is a problem or not, there is a finally block. This finally block executes. See, this finally block is almost like a cleanup uh, code block. So, irrespective of whether you have a problem in try or then the finally will get executed. So, let us try to compile this and then execute this. I compile this, compiles fine, now I execute. It is entering the main class. It got an exception divide by zero. It goes to the exception handler catch block. It prints the handler divide by zero in the exception text or the message. Then it goes to the finally block and then prints this. So if you see the code, this message is not printed because it is not able to divide. So you will not see a divide by some value here. 
it goes to this main class, goes to the exception class, goes to the finally block. Now let me do one thing. I just change this to 5, recompile. In this case, exception will not even happen. So these two messages will never get printed. So let us compile this. Execute. Look here, it goes to the main block. It executes without any problem. So it doesn't go to the cache block. It goes to the finally block. Okay. So whether you have a problem or not, it goes to the finally block. If you have a problem, it goes to the catch block. So under the catch block, you can have multiple exceptions being handled. So we have given a generic exception E. So you can have different exceptions to be caught also. Let us see how we can do that. Look at this block. I have one try block over here. Then I have got two catch blocks. In this catch block, I specifically say uh, null pointer exception. So that means if you want to do specific action whenever this null pointer exception happens. So you can, there are file not open, file not present, array subscript out of range, divide by zero, space not allocated low memory or may unable to allocate memory. There are so many exceptions possible. So you can specifically say if this exception happens, do this. Or if any exception happens, do this. So you have this very specific multiple catch blocks under the try block. So in any case, at any point of time, there will be one catch block that will be executed. First, it will try this. Once it has a problem, it will go to one of the catch blocks. Then it will finally go to the finally block. Now let me try to compile this and then execute. Compile this, no problem. When we execute, this time it doesn't have any problem, so it goes to the main class. There is no exception, it exits through the finally class. So this is the fundamental way of writing exceptions in Java. We end this session here. Thank you.